Lincoln Park, Terry Dangerfield here, and this is my vlog dated May 11th, 2018. Only a few weeks left and it will be summer break. This time of year is busy and exciting all at the same time. I truly appreciate all of you, your efforts on behalf of our community, and most importantly, on behalf of our students. I wanted to take a moment to provide some focus on where we are and where we are going as we finish this school year and certainly as we start again next fall. The first area is our Resilient Schools Project. As you all know, we are deeply involved in this work and we have provided some intense training and support at ROP Elementary during this school year. The great news is that the qualitative and quantitative data at ROP is something to be proud of. There will be more about that in some future announcements, but Hey, great job, ROP staff. As we did at ROP, we will be providing a similar approach to Lafayette Elementary and the middle school for the 2018-2019 school year. This will be done as we continue our partnership with the Trauma and Loss Institute for Children, or as it is known, TLC. While these two buildings will be getting some additional supports, the work is district-wide. It is expected that all staff members are approaching our school environment with a trauma-informed and resilient-focused mindset. I want to emphasize that when I hear someone say this, I have come to learn that this person is not fully aware of or has not been educated in the trauma-informed and resilient-focused research. There's always a place for a consequence and that will never be taken away. What I need all of us to understand is that the consequence may be different than what some of us feel it should be. One of the most difficult things for us to, adults to understand is that we are not raising kids the way we were raised. This is about their future, not our past. I say this over and over because it is not about us, it's about them. So to my friends out there that are either of the crime and punishment mindset or are of the this is too touchy feely thinking, I'm asking you do two things for me. Number one, reflect and learn as much as you can about this subject. Learn the importance of being a resilience champion for our kids the importance of truly understanding that a student's behavior is telling us something and that we need to pay close attention to it because there is something deeper going on that is causing that. It will almost always be because an area of their circle of courage is damaged and needs repaired. These words and vocabulary are vital as we continue this work. Punishing someone that is sick, hungry, or homeless would not make sense. So then let's not allow ourselves to do that with a student that has a need that is not being met. Let's instead provide them what they need. A consequence for the decision a person made is and will always be appropriate. But please understand that this is not the lesson, nor is it doing anything to repair the damage to their circle. In other words, consequences alone do not meet a person's needs. Folks, we have been punishing in this country's school systems for a very long time. How has that been working for us? Number two, if after you reflect, you are still struggling to get on board, Fake it until you make it. I am making this clear. This is the expectation for Lincoln Park. We cannot show a single parent, student, or community member that we do not have their child's needs at the center of everything we do. You need to convince your parents, your colleagues, and your administration that you are all in on your students' needs. Everyone needs to feel it. Not because we want the image, but because that is what is best for kids. Simply close your eyes and think about your own child or a child in your family. Would you want an adult in their school life that wouldn't work hard to meet their needs? Of course not. You might even ask for a new teacher or maybe even move schools. That's because you would want the best for them. And it would come as no surprise that that is what we do for this community. It's just the other side of the coin. If you are struggling to get on board, I personally invite you to contact me. I will gladly speak with you and through our conversation begin to hopefully clear up the vision for what we are trying to do here in Lincoln Park. The second area that I would like to talk with you about is our instruction inside our classrooms. This portion of the video is more intended for our teaching and admin staff members. There has been a lot of discussion about this topic for several years and none of it more intense than in the last few months. I wanna try and clarify what we mean by high quality instruction. First, high quality instruction or HQI as many of us know it, is nothing if there is not strong evidence through data of high quality learning. Meaning you can teach your tail off, but if the students in front of you are not getting it, then it is not working and arguably not high quality. In life, we are all, including me, judged by our results. Our students are our results. 
We are seeing that our classrooms are not showing enough evidence of instructional decisions being made in the moment based on what the students in front of them need. There are probably lots of reasons for this, such as the teacher feels like they have to stick to their lesson plan so that they don't get in trouble, the teacher feels the pressure to stick to the pacing guide, the stick to the curriculum, etc. I'm going to attempt to make this as clear as I can. We need to have classrooms that are student-centered, not teacher-centered. We should be instructing on what the students need. This needs to be as individualized as possible, but grouping is obviously a very widely used tier one approach. The entire model is based on the instructional cycle that I am sure you have all seen. This cycle can be broken into two main areas, assessments and decisions. We need to see our teachers making more frequent decisions based on where the kids in front of them are in order to get them to mastery. Your goal is to get 80% of your students to mastery on the specified learning target as soon as you can. Research has shown over and over again that an effective teacher gets 80% of their students to mastery using only the tier one environment. You should assess, decide who is in your 80% bucket, make a decision to get more into that bucket, teach, and then do it all over again until that bucket reaches 80%. These decisions should be very frequent. We should not be waiting until tomorrow, the unit test, a PSP, MSTEP, or NWA to see how they did before we make change. At that point, it is just too late. In a 15 to 20 minute visit, we should see a teacher make several decisions based on what the students need. It shouldn't just be reteach, reteach, reteach. The teacher should be evaluating the effectiveness of what they just did, and it is, if it is not getting the great results that you want, try something different. Every teacher's goal is to get a student to learn what it is that they are to learn as soon as they can, using a variety of ways to get them there. That is the definition of a master teacher. Master teacher equals results and a lot of tools in the toolbox. This toolbox means knowledge of various forms of formative assessments and knowledge of various ways to teach a specific learning target. Teaching was never meant to be easy. It is meant to change a human life. Here's a quick example of what I mean. I have a subject or a learning target that I plan on teaching. I go about my lesson, I teach that learning target. I then, after about five or seven minutes, I will stop and do some form of formative assessment. I'm trying to gather data on where are my students at. I decide who is in the 80% bucket, and then I make a decision. Am I going to regroup these, these kids? Did the, the lesson that I just did give me a high number in my 80% bucket, or did it only get a couple of students, and I need to go at it with a different instructional strategy? I make that decision. I teach based on that decision. Again, after about five or seven minutes, I do, use some form of formative assessment to get a quick feel for where they are, decide who's in the 80% bucket, and I go back and I do that cycle over and over and over again until I get my 80% bucket filled. So we adjust to our kids. If they have demonstrated they have mastered something, move them on. If they don't, attack it with ferociousness until they do. However, you have to know that right now, today, in this lesson, we can't only wait until after the lesson to decide what to do tomorrow. We must also make decisions now and not lose time while they are in front of us. We have to shorten the time in between instructional decisions. We see teachers collecting a lot of data, doing a great job with that but we are not seeing a decision as a result of that data collection. More decisions, more frequently. I know these are general statements that I am making, but it is more widespread than you may realize. I'm asking that you all focus on this in terms of instruction. Establish your learning targets, assess them, make a decision based on that data. Again, more instructional decisions, more frequently in the moment. So just a quick recap. The Resilient Schools Project is our focus on meeting a student's need. It is about seeing behavior as a clue to something much deeper, and in turn, working to identify what area of the student's circle of courage is damaged and what we do to repair that. Basically, have a heart for a kid and be a champion for them. Next, the focus of our instructional delivery should be about making more instructional decisions more frequently in the moment, based on what the student in front of you needs. Teach to the student, provide them what they need and get 80% of your class to mastery of the learning target as soon as you can by using a variety of formative assessments and instructional methods to be able to make good instructional decisions. I hope this provides some clarity and focus to what we are trying to accomplish in Lincoln Park and I'm sure it causes more questions. 
I encourage you to engage in discussions in your teaching teams, with administration, and anywhere you feel would be effective. I want and need you all to feel comfortable and supported as we continue this worthy work. Thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great week.